and welcome to this final tutorial in the Premiere Pro CS6 Basic series that I've been doing for Creative Cal. I hope you've enjoyed the series and it's been useful to you and I hope you'll come back and revisit whenever you need to remember bits and pieces. In this last tutorial we're going to look at something called rolling shutter. Now rolling shutter is a problem particularly for mobile phones and DSLR cameras. Cameras that use a CMOS sensor scan the image a one line at a time from the top to the bottom. So if you move your camera quickly what's going to happen is the lines at the top of the frame are going to be recorded at a different time from the lines at the bottom of the frame so you get a warping. The end result is you can make the shot look very jelly-like and very unreal. Now that warping can be quite distracting and, and a real issue for some people and particularly seeing that DSLR footage and camera phone footage is becoming more and more common. This is camera phone footage. This is actually um, full HD footage recorded on my own camera. So if I go to the details, you'll see here that it is 1920 by 1080. So we're talking about full HD footage, but because it's using this CMOS sensor, it's going to get this wavy warped look. So if I just play it as I move just to scan these bars at the end of a, a bridge, you can see that they're waving and they're looking very unrealistic as they go through. Now, generally speaking, what you ought to do is plan your footage so you don't have to use lots of fast movement for a camera such as this. And it's going to be worse on some cameras than it is going to be on others. DSLRs won't necessarily be usually as bad as, say, a camera phone is going to be. But even so, we can deal with that with a new effect added in Premiere Pro CS6 called the Rolling Shutter Repair. Now, I'm going to go to my Effects tab and I'm going to type in Rolling R O L L I N G, and you'll see there under distort rolling shutter repair and click and drag and drop rolling shutter onto the clip or if the clip is selected you can just double click the effect and it does the same thing it applies it now instantly you've probably seen that that's made a difference I'm just going to turn it off and on you can see that that already has made quite a bit of difference to try and straighten things up and I've actually got my safe margins here so we can see what a straight line should look like so if I turn off rolling shutter you can see that we've got quite a lot of angle here. This is a straight line but look at this point to this point is quite significant in its angling and yet when I turn on the rolling shutter repair you can see it's starting to make a difference. But we can increase that. You'll see here you've got the ability to increase the amount so if I take that right up to 100% which is often the case that you need to do with particularly a camera phone footage and then turn that off and on you'll see it is slightly better it's not perfect and you might well not be able to get it perfect this bar here is beginning to look a lot better but over here we're still a bit slanted but you can see that it has made quite a difference now you do have scan direction here and you need to be just a little bit careful with modern phones for instance you can see that I've taken my phone and put it on its side however the sensor in the phone has noticed that I've done that and is still scanning top to bottom OK, now these options here are for if you've got a phone that hasn't sensed that you've moved the camera. So if you've got a camera phone and you've turned it and the phone doesn't recognise that you've changed angles, then you would need to go, say, left to right. So this would be the top here and this would be the bottom here, had my camera phone not known that I'd turned it, so that when I turned it I should have chosen left to right. But you see, if I choose left to right, it actually makes things slightly worse in this particular example because my phone has worked out what's gone on. So I'm still top to bottom, and that's actually the default. However, under Advanced, there are a couple of options. You've noticed that we've got Method, Warp, and a much higher accuracy method called Pixel Motion. The problem is, it's going to take a lot longer to render. And you can already see in my spacebar here, I've got this red bar, which is going to say it's going to take a long time before this happens, a long time before this renders. And in actual fact, I know that if I use this, I need to render the whole thing through. So I'm not going to actually render, so I'm just going to show you on a single uh, frame. So if I go from warp and I choose pixel motion and give it a moment, you'll see that it has actually made it slightly better. And then down here at the bottom, you've got the amount of detail. So it's looking at 20% of the pixels in the shot. You could theoretically take it all the way up to 100 and then give it a minute to render through. And that's actually even brought in some artifacting for me. So I can't go up that high, but at 50%, give it a minute to render, I'll just pull it through a frame I'm still getting problems so you just have to be a little bit careful as to what it will cope with you can still see this causing me problems so I'm just going to take it back to 20 percent 
and that's going to give me the best result so you can see if I turn it off before and then with pixel motion top to bottom on you can see that that's an awful lot straighter and looking a lot more realistic as I say on my particular machine because it's quite an old machine I'd have to render it through to play it all back so what I'll do is I'll render this and then I'll come back and I'll play it leaving these title safe and action safe bars on just so you can see how much closer to the original it's got so I'll be back in just a moment so that's now rendered through let's go back to the beginning and just hit the space bar and you can see that that is maintaining a really good straight up straight down look and again if I select the clip and were to go to turn off rolling shutter you'd see that it's going to make a massive difference as to how wobbly the whole thing's going to look just look at that jelly movement as it goes between one and the other and then turn it back on much straighter so the rolling shutter repair it can take quite a while to render if you've not got a very powerful machine if you've got a really good graphics card in your machine then you're not going to have too many problems but you can see that this is going to solve a lot of problems make your footage a lot easier to use particularly when you've got camera phones you don't need to go up by the way to quite such a high level when you with DSLRs with camera phones you do pretty much need to take it up to 100% but I would start with the default if you've got a DSLR at 50% and also don't start with pixel motion do start with the warp option and see how it goes and then if you discover you need more just pull up the percentage to start off with leaving it at warp and only go to pixel motion if you've really got major problems as you can clearly see I had with this one but I think you'll find that with a good DSLR you won't need to have it up huge amounts 50% will probably do the trick for you might even be able to go lower than that rather than having to go up to these more render intensive options so I hope you've enjoyed this series if you've watched this series through a torrent or some other kind of download, do bear in mind that the whole series is free to watch on Creative Cow. That's creativecow.net. And not only that, when you go to Creative Cow, you've got access to all the forums, which are followed by industry experts the world over who can answer questions very quickly and help you with your production. So, can I encourage you to get to www.creativecow.net, watch these tutorials and many others on many other subjects. My name's Andrew Davis, and thank you for watching this series.